Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? Uh, not much. Are you sure? Oh, I'm punchy. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I'm punchy. You want to talk about anything? Nope. Okay. I'm punchy though. Mm-hmm. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. apologies for anybody listening and watching. If you hear me sniffling a lot, I have terrible allergies right now, so I apologize for any of the inconvenient, gross sniffling noises. Uh, the, right up front, let me just say a couple of things. First of all, as usual, let me say thank you all so much for listening and watching the pod and commenting. Um, the, the We're growing every week, um, which is all we can ask for. Uh, so big thanks to the oldies and big thanks to the newbies for joining us. Remember to spread the word. If you like it, you think somebody else would like this, Go ahead, uh, let a motherfucker know, um, and, and continue to leave those comments we, uh, on YouTube, especially right when the it pod drops. Even if you drop like one or two, hey, this is for the algorithm. Um, all that stuff helps us. Um, same thing with iTunes and, and Spotify. So thank you guys so much um, for doing this. Um, we got a lot of fun things planned for 2024. Also, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Coming up, we are on the road every weekend in December, except for Christmas. Right. Um, that first week we're in Kansas City, we'll sell out. Me, you, Lee Syatt. Can't wait. That second week, we are in Columbia, Missouri, which is just me and you. Mm -hmm. We'll sell out. And then St. Louis, Missouri, me, you, Sandy Danto, we'll sell out. All right. The next week, Mohegan Sun, they're already adding shows, everybody. 100% we'll sh sell out in Connecticut. Make sure you come and and um, and check that show out. That's me and Jacob. It's going to be cold. Uh, yeah, we were not going to go outside for the entire time. We're in a casino. No, no, 100%. But yeah, yeah. either way, it's still, it's going to be cold. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't breathe fresh air the entire time I'm there. That's it. No, what no, about yeah. for restaurants and stuff? Are we just going to find everything in the casino? It's all in the casino, dude. Michael Jordan Steakhouse is in there. It's pretty good. All right. I'm in so for that. So I'll eat some food. All right. Um, And then that Sunday, I don't know if you're coming with me to Nashville. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, But we have that one show in Nashville, December 17th. Again, we'll sell out. i uh, got some amazing guests on there. I can't mention the musical guests, but um, Chelsea Lynn, uh, Trailer Trash Tammy is Love on her. that show with me. Uh, a couple other very funny comics. December 17th in Nashville. We take a week off for Christmas and then Phoenix uh, for New Year's Eve will sell out. These are huge markets for Jacob and I. Uh, if you're listening and you know you've been to those shows in those markets, those are crazy. So if mm -hmm. you if you're if you want to go, I would get your tickets now. Comedianjoshwolf.com. And with that, let me address the first thing I want to address. Okay. Other you, than the fact that you're punchy? Oh, I'm punchy. Mm -hmm. Um, yo, dude, so Matt Rife special came out mm -hmm. and your brother sent me a text today and he was like, uh, Hey, what do you think about this Matt Rife controversy? I'm like, with too many abs, what's, <laughs> what's the, did he grow a ninth and 10th ab? Like we don't, we've never seen that. He was like, no, he said he's getting killed for his first joke in his special. And then, which was, I guess was a domestic violence joke. Yep. And then for the people that were complaining, he sent them a link, said, this is, if you're complaining, here's where you should leave your complaints. Mm -hmm. And it was a link for people to buy a special needs helmet. Yes. Okay. Let me say a couple things. First of all, dude, his response was fucking perfect. And hilarious. And hilarious. And you know what he wants? Those people who are touchy, he wants them out of his fan base. Mm -hmm. Good for him, dude. He's drawing a line right fucking now. Mm -hmm. You want to laugh at silly? You want me to, you want and, and domestic violence isn't silly. No. Yeah. But let me just say this about, yo, dude, first of all, if you don't like a joke, just don't watch that yeah. comedian. Yeah. That, that's it. Don't get up. Because I guarantee you, everybody who laughs or who doesn't, who thinks that joke isn't funny, mm -hmm. is laughing at another joke that other people think is offensive. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're picking and choosing by your own morality and ethics what, but I can laugh at this. Yeah. For, I'm going to give an example, like not comparing the two that like d d domestic violence and Christianity or Trump, right. right? Like it's okay to make fun of this vast religion and mm -hmm. everybody who, right? Right. W which a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Tons. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
right? You're picking and choosing. Listen, either you laugh at everything or you laugh at nothing. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to fucking pick and choose just because something bothers you, right? Mm -hmm. That is not okay. Because I, pr I promise you, and I'll just say, like, I promise you that maybe a black guy wouldn't laugh at a black joke, but he'd laugh at a fat joke. Not okay. I, dude, I'm laughing at Jew jokes. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing at Jew jokes. I, 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 and, and by the way, there's a lot of them going around right now. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing at Jew jokes. Yeah, okay? Absolutely. I'm laughing at all of them. If it's funny, it's funny. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. But let me just say this about his domestic violence joke up front. Yo, man, it's not even like, and even if he hears this, it's not even like the most... And I don't, I don't mean this as a knock because as comics, when you're dealing with big, broad issues, mm -hmm. we're going to hone in on some of the same stuff. That doesn't mean like, like, like a million people have done jokes about teachers having sex with students, right? Right. It's just something funny that that doesn't mean one person is stealing from the other. It's just such a big, broad topic and everybody kind of finds the same area because that same area, I, I bet you there's a thousand comics who have said something like, um, the, cause the mom always is the person who turns the, mm -hmm. the teacher in. It's never the dad. Right. Cause the dad's like, dude, that's fucking, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So that's the joke. Mm -hmm. And everybody's done some sort of like variation of that. His domestic violence joke was basically, there was a woman out to eat. Um, she had a black guy. I, I, I'm going to paraphrase, but that like, um, his basic joke was if, if she, they broke it down. And right. Something said like, maybe she should have been in the kitchen cooking. It was, they were out at a restaurant. Right, had, right, right. And he was like, I think that if she could cook, maybe she wouldn't have the black guy. Yeah. Right. It, 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 Everybody has made some who's touched this topic has been in that silly, ridiculous, right. big, broad area. You can tell by who he is, by the way he delivers jokes, mm -hmm. by the way he does his crowd work. He goes in, but in the most non serious way. Right. It's like watching Shane Gillis and thinking he, me like, he means all of, you know, dude, he's. This is where he he finds dark funny. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. But you have to... Guys, comics. These comics are trying to make you laugh. Look at their intent. The intent is to make you laugh. I promise you Matt Reif is a very respectful young man. He's not out beating people. He's not pro-domestic violence. No. And that joke is not making anybody go home and hit their wife. Yeah. You, you know what? You touchy fucks. You touchy pussies. You, look, man, just because it's not fun for you doesn't mean other people aren't having fun with it. You don't get to be the fucking fun police. And you don't get to police what other people think is funny. And some of us like dark humor. I like all the dark humor, man. Me too. I like all of it. Yo, I will laugh at a straight up racist joke. If it's funny... I laugh, man. Yeah. I am the furthest thing from racist. Yeah. I will laugh at a domestic violence joke. Is it funny? I will laugh at a sexist joke. Is it funny? Mm -hmm. I'll laugh at a Jew joke. Is it funny? That's all it is to me. Is it funny? And is the intent of the person telling it from, to make me laugh? Yeah. That's it. Because people don't understand that line between it, like a, the intent, like that's what you, exactly what you're saying is some people are saying it as a joke, but also thinking the intent behind the joke is to be malicious when that is most of the time, not the intention. There are some comics who don't know that line to where the jokes sound more rule, like rude and cruel than it is funny. It's, it's all about the intention and tone and how somebody says it. There's a guy named Kevin Brennan, uh, Neil Brennan's brother and Neil and Kevin are not close. Mm. And Kevin is the dude who is he, he, his jokes do cross. Right. He is a, he's a mean comic. Right. Right. And he's been pretty much ostracized out of the community because of it. Yeah. We're not into that shit either. We're into funny. Yeah. Because that also, that type of comic makes all, everybody, every other comic look bad. A hundred percent. Yeah. Right, guys, yo, know, there are so many other important things in the world 
than you trying to play gotcha cop with comedians. Mm -hmm. There are so many other fucking things. And if you don't think something's funny, which is cool, yo, dude, there's a lot of comics who are very successful that I don't think are funny. That's fine. That doesn't mean they're bad. That means that's not the type of art that I like. So right. this is not the type of art you like. And people getting on him about his comedy, because I've read, you told me that some people are like, it's not getting reviewed that well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, he is such a young comic. Yeah. He's a fucking infant as a comic. His crowd work is next level. It mm -hmm. is so far beyond his years because he is an improv dude. And yeah. his crowd work is so far. I, I am so impressed with his crowd work. It is so conversational mm -hmm. and so quick and dark. And his audience allows him to be dark because he knows they know what the deal is. Mm -hmm. His comedy will catch up. It will. It's the same shit when I hear people giving Brendan Schaub a hard time. Yo, know, man, these, these guys get exposure really quick. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to say no to a special. It's yeah. hard to say no to the attention. But with all the attention, people are expecting you to be Dave Chappelle. There's only one Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. And that's Dave Chappelle. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, I, I, I you, you know, dude, you know me. I love stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. I love stand-up comics. I, it, has, it continues to grow. My love for stand-up comedy and my love for comedians. It continues to grow. It's gotten better. I have... As I get older, I have more appreciation for what goes into this job mm -hmm. and to be successful at it. And so I, I have so much respect for Matt and how hard he's fucking worked. And, uh, and I, I hope this doesn't, well, it definitely doesn't bother him just judging by his response. Yep. His response was perfect. His mm -hmm. response was, hey, fuck you, ride with me or put the helmet on. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Which is exactly what it should be. He should not be catering his art to a certain few people. Anybody. Yeah. The oh. deal with art, yo, whoever your favorite artist is, I promise you, they do their art because they like it mm -hmm. and they hope somebody... They, uh, art's they, all about perspective. Dude, it is all about... If I'm making my art because I think you'll like it, it's going to be shitty. Mm -hmm. If I write a joke because I'm like, oh, I think someone was, I think they're going to like this. I like this punchline, but I think they'll like this punchline more. That's going to be shitty. You are there most of the time because you like the authenticity of your artist. Right. You like the message that they are delivering. And if they're delivering somebody else's message, you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. True. So I, 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 yeah, I'm sorry I went on that little escapade, but. Is that why you're punchy? No. Oh, okay. No. I'll find out off camera. Maybe. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, dude. By the way, I had a, a workout today with Delphine. Mm -hmm. Almost shit myself in the workout. Again? Not in a workout. I haven't shit myself in a workout. You said, when, last time we talked about Delphine, I, and you were like, craziest thing happened today. I go, blowout? And you were like, almost. You said that the last time we talked about your workout with No, Delphine. you said blowout, and I said no. You said almost. I don't think so. We got to check the tape. Okay. Well, because I, I almost trusted a fart. Yeah, you can't do that. I, I, by the way, can I say one other comic thing? Sure. I was in, we, we did Naples and, um, by the way, I loved those shows in Naples. Yeah, I had a great time. I was really, really fun. Yeah, I loved. It's a cool the, room too. I loved those shows in Naples. Nobody got stabbed this time, which was great. Well, nobody got stabbed last time either. But. Yeah. I went and saw Burt Kreischer again in Nashville. Yeah, how was that? Yo, dude, I'm so impressed with him. And that's another per person people are giving shit to online. For what? Yeah, not whatever. They don't think he's funny or they think he, he getting too big for his britches or he's not the same bird. Yo, dude, of course he's not. Mm -hmm. Oh, by, by the way, guys, if you expect people to be the same person they were 10 years ago, forget the out of this world success he's had. Mm -hmm. To think that's not going to change. And it, it doesn't change him that much, but he, you change, mm -hmm. dude. You go from playing a club to a fucking arena. You go from playing a club to flying private jets. You go from playing a club to fucking getting and doing and meeting all these people you've always wanted to meet. Yeah. You can change a little bit. Okay. But man, I'm going to tell you right now, he gets it, dude. He gives. And I, 
I really do. I, I see a lot of similarities in Bert and I, besides the fact that he's selling 25,000 tickets. Mm -hmm. In that, I really do feel like I give to the crowd. I, I'm, when I'm on stage, I'm giving you what I got. Absolutely. And, um, and he's a storyteller. He tells stories, dude. He is such a fucking entertainer. And he spends more, the, the production value of his set and what he gave to the people in the Bridgestone Arena that came out of his fucking pocket. Mm -hmm. Other people aren't doing that. No. That's for them. That's mm -hmm. for his audience. He gives back so much. I'm so impressed with him, man. I, I really am impressed with him. And I know a lot of people give him shit and be like, he just takes his shirt off and he tells dick jokes. And who the fuck cares? His audience loves it. Yeah, who cares? He's still selling out arenas, so. Dude, this is what everybody has to understand. He is performing. The people who like that are there. The yeah. people who don't are not. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah, dude. 100%. Simple as that. Um, but I had such a good time uh, in Nashville. And um, and then I went to L.A. and did the goddamn comedy jam. And I, it's always a good idea. It's always a good night when I get a chance to wear my gold fur coat. I bet it is. You love that thing. Oh, dude, I wish I could wear it every day. You could. I know, it's, it's cold enough right now. It's going to get dingy. I might have to buy another one. Yeah, buy one that you wear on special events and then buy one that you wear daily. It's like, excuse me, it's like a pair of shoes. You have one that's a daily beater, and you have one that you put on when you want to wear a good outfit. What a great idea. I really want a white fur coat. That's going to get dirty fast. Yeah, yeah, that will only come off for special occasions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like any time I fly. Fly? Yeah, dude, come on in the airport with a white fur coat and a white Adidas jumpsuit with some white fucking you know, Air Force Ones. I'm not going to let you wear an Adidas jumpsuit. Why not? Nike. You wear a Nike tech. Do they have a white one? Maybe. But I'm not going to let you wear it. You can't wear an Adidas jumpsuit and then Air Force once. Why not? Because that's not how that works. You don't miss. You don't mix Nike and Adidas. Yeah, but the Nike, the Adidas white tracksuit under a fucking white fur coat with a white uh, bucket hat. Get out of here. Nah, too much. Too much white? T too much Racist. for the outfit, period. Really? Yeah. White bucket hat threw it over the top. Well, what am I going to wear? Just a black hat? Wear what you usually wear, yeah. And then, yeah, no, you can't wear Adidas in the Air Force One. So if you're going to wear the Adidas tracksuit, we'd have to get you some, like, some, some Yeezys. Some, like, white I'm Yeezys. I'm not wearing Yeezys. They're super comfortable. Uh, yeah, but I think he's a douche. Yeah, but you're not wearing them to support Kanye. I, I'm not? No. The ones that I'm about to get, I'm using his workout shoes. I don't support Kanye. I'm just going to wear them to work out in. Yeah, but I don't want... Nah. No. Okay. But that, but see, that, that, that... Or like a pair of white shells. How about that? I do love a white shell. So you could do a classic white shell, like the triple white, so the stripes are all white as well. You could do that. And and right and you know what I when we would stop, I I, I wouldn't stand and rest. I would get in like an eighties b boy stance and rest, like you know, like crouch. Your knees don't have you don't You're have right. the knees for that. You're right. They don't. I don't. You would squat down and then wouldn't be able to get back. You're up. You're hundred percent right. Oh, I know I am. Yeah, hundred percent right. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh thank you for. Allowing me to do that. Do you have anything you want to add as a new comic or anything? No, no, I, your, I, what your perspective is? I put my two cents in. I mean, like, you know, even when I was talking to my girlfriend, Iman, she was like, I'm hearing he's, his comedy is not that funny, but he was so good on Wild and Out. And I was like, babe, Wild and Out is improv. His crowd work is so good because he's so good at improv. I go, improv and writing jokes are so different. I go, mm -hmm. he's a super funny dude, but he still needs time to develop who he is as a comic and figure out what he's writing and how he's writing. I go, I'm not surprised that his crowd work is better than his stand-up because if you look at the clips he's posting online, he's posting crowd work. That's what he's been doing for longer. 100%, because that's what he's better at. And I understand that. So it's just a matter of letting him work it out and, and take some time and get a couple more years under his belt to establish who he is as a comic instead of a crowd work guy. I'm going to tell you something else. This controversy, in air quotes, is, will be the best thing that ever happened to him. Probably. Because whatever little bit he had that he was holding back because he thought, oh, I don't want to offend people, is going to be gone. Out the window. And true, authentic him will come through. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened to Shane Gillis when he got canceled at SNL. He Shane like, Gillis got canceled? Dude, he got cast on SNL and canceled. How fast? He never saw the light of day at SNL. How's that possible? What happened? Um, I, I forget the details. I think 
something about his politics. Got it. Um, he has some of the funniest jokes. Dude, oh my he's, God. I'm going to tell you, he's that guy. Yeah. He's the next that guy. Yeah, because he, there's like some people are like, oh, his, his humor is dark. The subjects he talks about, he teeters on that line. I go, he doesn't teeter on that line. He though. does. I mean, yeah, but not as much as people think. Like he teeters on that line because of what he talks about because, you know, he has a, a has an uncle who has uh, Down syndrome and he has he plays into that a little bit and he has a joke about that. But none of it is malicious is my point. It's like it, the, the intent behind it is not to be making fun of a certain demographic or bagging on a demographic. But expert level delivery is yeah. what allows you and the general pop to not be offended by what he's saying. Right. Little smirk on his face, laughs a little bit. His delivery, you can tell he thinks this is funny too. Yeah. And it's authentic to him. You know, so because yeah, it also dude. relates to him. Yeah, it's just what he thinks. You can tell it's the same thing with Joey Diaz, man. Yeah, people look. Joey is fucking filthy, but mm -hmm. you're not offended watching him because it's so authentically him. Yeah, and the He's, people who are there to watch him like him for who he is. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Are you psyched uh, for Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to go to LA and see some friends for sure. Um, tell me and family, of course, but like. Tell me, I need to know two things. One, what is your favorite side dish on Thanksgiving? Two, your favorite Thanksgiving dessert. Three. Well, you said two questions and now you're asking three. Which yep. one is it? Uh, it's three questions. <laughs> Least favorite Thanksgiving side dish. I haven't, I want to start from the bottom. Least favorite because yep. I feel so passionate about this. I'm going to tell you, it's two. There's two of them. One, that cranberry sauce out of a can. For real. The worst, even if it's not out of a can, the worst thing. Cranberry, one of the worst. Cranberry sauce. The worst. Awful. So yeah, bad. Yeah. We don't see it at our Thanksgivings. Thank God. Those sweet potatoes with the marshmallows on top, get the fuck out of here. I'm out on that too. That is the dumbest. Yo, they're candied yams. They're already sweet. Why are you roasting a marshmallow yeah. on top of it? What's could, the fucking point? Could not agree more. So could not agree more. So gross. Yeah, yeah. But and I'm but so we're glad picking, we're just picking one. Oh, I'm picking the fucking the that one. The marshmallows on oh, top. Oh, really? Of the Over the cranberry? Hundred percent. Yeah, no. For me, it's cranberry. Because if I see you put that down, I'm like, oh, dude, the rest of this food's gonna suck. Okay, all right. Like I, I, I fucking that. It just we, is pointless to me. We flip flop the two. I might throw in a strong third place that green bean cast. Oh, shut up. I love that stuff. fucking crunchy onions. Oh, I love it. it. Eat my dick. Love that the green bean casserole. Fucking terrible. So far. So far. Love it. Terrible. Favorite dessert? Favorite dessert. Well, in our family, uh, my, your brother, Jonathan, my uncle, his wife is over. Oh, Charette. Charette. She makes that pumpkin bar. <sighs> Dude, I don't even like pumpkin pie. I don't like pumpkin flavored things. Is that maybe? It's like top three desserts I've ever had in my life. It's up Dude. there with grandma's coffee cake. Yeah. Dude, it's like so good. that pumpkin bar. I had it for the first time last year. Is I'm gonna oh, tell you good. I'm gonna tell you, but so that's up there. But then also for me, man, like apple pie, ala mode, easy. Okay, so, but you got to go with one. I'm not, I'm not asking you to uh, pick one. I'm going. I'm going. Look, man, if we take away Charette's specific dessert, I'm going pecan pie, pecan pie, pecan pie, pecan pie, pecan pie. We're gonna clip it. Um, pecan or pecan? pecan? It's pecan. Pecan pie. Pecan. Listen, dude, it's pecan. Pecan pie. C A N. How do you pronounce that? Can. Okay. Yeah, but that's like saying like. How do you spell it? T O U C A N. Pronounce it. Toucan. Okay. Yeah, but if you look at so many different letters, like like look at bomb and like bomb, right? B O M B. Replace the B with a W. What is it? Wom? No, it's womb. It's different. Like the are the English language is fucking stupid. We have two, 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 there, there, and there. We have words that sound the same that are spelled different. I mean, completely different things. Yeah, you know the one get, that gets get me. Get the fuck out of here. You know what that gets me. Read and red are spelled the same. But mean, we and, were just like, no, and mean the same thing. One's just in a past tense and yeah, one's in a present. Yeah, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't, something shouldn't be spelled the same and pronounced. My the point same. the English yeah, yeah. language is dumb. Yeah. So uh, but that's why pecan. Pecan. Anywho, um, if taking charrettes pumpkin bars out, I'm going uh, apple pie a la mode. Okay. Easy. All right. Favorite side dish? Yeah. Mac and cheese. Now, here's where I'm going to throw a little wrench in because it depends. I will say, just like, uh, okay, I'll use it as bread pudding as an example. 
Because bread pudding, to me, is either the best or the worst. Yeah. If you get the texture wrong, it's fucked. There's no in between. It's yeah. either the best dessert or mm. the worst. And so, so like, for me, this is the same with the sides. Stuffing is either 50, the 50. best side yep. on the table or the fucking worst. Yep. You're like, are those croutons with Sh just yeah, celery next to yeah. it? Yeah, shout out mashed potatoes, though, for always being consistent. I like how you gave a shout out to mashed potatoes. Shout out mashed potatoes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But also, I want to say this right now, and I'm looking at the camera. If you make mac and cheese for Thanksgiving, and you put breadcrumbs on it, jump out a window. There <laughs> should not be breadcrumbs on mac and cheese, okay? Plain and simple, no thank you. If it's on there, I'm not eating it. I'm going to add one more caveat, because Halisi, who is my brother Dan's wife, she makes a wicked mac and cheese. Oh, my God. And so does Charette. Yeah, but they both okay. can throw down. But there should be some sort of criteria. You shouldn't just be able to, because people are relying on the mac and cheese. Yeah. So you shouldn't just be like, I'll make the mac and cheese. There should be a vote. Everybody knows who makes the good mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. The mac and cheese is not something that should be fucked up. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like mac and cheese for me is like the side dish that I'm looking forward to every Thanksgiving. I could just eat a plate of Halisi's mac and cheese. I'm going to tell you for that real. That is amazing. I'll tell you what, what I think is the maybe the worst part of Thanksgiving is the turkey. I like the dessert and the side dishes. Turkey is a garbage meat. Yeah, it's dry. It is a garbage. There's no, like, I've never been to a Thanksgiving. I've never been to a Thanksgiving to where someone can make the turkey not dry. I, yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to Charette's and Halisi's? Yeah, we were there. I know we didn't do that last year because. No, that's right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. Even not dry, go, it's the worst of the meats. Yep. Ham better than it's ham is better. Oh, I don't know about that. Really? I don't know if I'm taking like a honey glazed ham over a turkey on Thanksgiving. Yeah, but what about a ham steak in the morning that I used to make you for breakfast? Different. Ham steaks are different. I'm just saying ham, a piece of ham or a piece of turkey. I don't know. I, again, it depends on yeah. what kind of ham I'm getting. What about pigeon? I heard pigeon, but you know, last time we talked about pigeon, I got a bunch of messages like pigeon's not bad. I'm like, okay. Who's voluntarily eating pigeon? Yo, dude, I saw on <laughs> TikTok this dude who made raccoon stew and he picked a full on fucking femur up and put it, clink, put it on his plate. Yo, dude, I got to send that to you. I'm not eating raccoon. He was like, this is going to be delicious. Oh, how do you feel about the people who try to fry their turkeys on Thanksgiving? Probably makes it taste better but has a way more of a percentage for it to go wrong. Have you seen the videos of frying a turkey gone wrong? How could it go wrong? You just put it in the oil. Oh, dude. I'm going to send you a video. That, dude. Is there a fire? Oh, bro. If the, if the oil's too hot and there's too much oil in it when you yeah. drop the turkey in, the grease or the oil pops out. It hits the flame. Grease fire. You're fucked. Like, there's videos. Dude, there was a fire department video that released like a week and a half ago. I don't remember where they were, but demonstrating what could go wrong if you fry a turkey and they put a mannequin next to this turkey and they dropped it in a pot of oil and the whole, everything caught on fire. The, the mannequin was in four pieces because it was completely melted by the time it was done. Dude. I think a fried turkey would taste better. But Without a doubt. But there is so much more of a possibility for shit to go wrong. You know what I've never had? I've never had a turducken. I'm in for that. Me too. Have you had a turducken? Is it delicious? Depends on who cooks it. What's that's like, like most food though? You gotta, you gotta you gotta slow cook that sucker with a turkey with a duck chicken. Yeah. yeah, you go chicken in the duck and then that in the turkey because you got to go smallest to biggest. Mm. Or is it duck in the turkey? Or I think duck it's in duck the in the chicken, chicken in the turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be right. Yeah, and are you squeezing all these animals through the butthole? I don't know if you're because so you're I, saying I, a turkey no, could shit out a chicken. Well, I haven't seen people put it in like that. Stop I've right seen, now. Stop right now. You're putting it in the butthole. And you're putting a full turkey, a full chicken in the turkey's butthole so you, a turkey could shit out a chicken. That's not how I've seen it done. How I've seen the turducken done is they cut open each one, put it in, and then sew it, and then like tie it back together. Like a football? Yeah, kind of. So then what they, do they the, tie it with? Rope. In, in your meat? Yeah, if you slow cook it. It's just like when I worked at Jersey Mike's, when we had to make the roast beef, you know, like when you tie it together oh, to keep it closed right, and then right, you take it off, right, it doesn't right. do anything to it. So what they do is they cut the turkey open, place it in like that, and then tie it back together. I like to think of the butthole. I can tell you do. <laughs> <laughs> Big butthole guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> 
big butthole guy over here. <laughs> Oof. Nobody's ever said that about me before. He's a big butthole guy over here. Big butthole guy. It could be taken two ways. Either that I have a big butthole. Or that you like butthole. Or I like big buttholes. Yeah. So three different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one are you? Uh, uh, maybe all three. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer I wanted to hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yo, by the way, good job last night at Kimmel's. Oh, I appreciate it. Every Monday night, guys, if you don't know, I have a show in Vegas. And Jacob was down there last night, and a couple of my friends from um, Absinthe came down and mm -hmm. did some improv. And what did you think it was called? Amethyst. Yeah. I've been promoting their show. As Amethyst? Online. I was like, you guys got to go see Amethyst while you're in Vegas. And <laughs> One's a crystal, one's an alcohol. Yeah. Couldn't be more different. Well, one is not a show and one is. That also. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and I'm pretty sure one. also Amethyst is the name of, uh, of a drag queen that I know about. On RuPaul? Yeah, she was on RuPaul. Amethyst is also the name of the kid in my book who I, you don't remember this, but. You used to have a joke where you used the name Amethyst, didn't you? There was a kid, you and I were at a park and I was swinging you on the swing. And this guy was swinging his kid on the swing. And this is how dumb dudes are. You could tell midway through, we were competing to see whose kid could go the highest. Jesus. And it would be like a push, and then he'd be like a push, and I'd be like a push a little harder. <laughs> and uh, Not everything's a competition, bro. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you want to know why it ended? Because one of us he, flew off? He pushed this little amethyst. And you know when it gets, it hits that part where you're like free fall, and then it drops? Yeah, you come out of the seat a little bit. Yeah, his kid just went, Daddy, I'm scared. And he was like, well, that's too damn bad. And no, and he grabbed him. And then that's when he said, I'm so sorry, Amethyst. I'm like, your kid's name is Amethyst? He I, didn't, I'm going to tell you right now, he had zero choice in that name. Uh, for sure he had zero choice in that name, but that kid better learn how to fight. If your name is Amethyst, you're you better gonna learn get, how to defend yourself. You're gonna, you, better get, you better learn how to throw those hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or just play into the name. So are you, um, what are you looking forward to most for Thanksgiving? Um... I mean, I haven't been back to LA in a cool minute, so I'm excited to see some friends for sure while I'm down there. Uh, I'm excited to see family, of course, like grandma and grandpa are going to be there, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just mainly to go excited to go walk around the old stomping grounds. We are going to get so much food that we haven't eaten in a while while we're in LA. Like, I, What's the number one spot for you? So Leo's Tacos is on the corner of Sunset and... What's that? You know where that Target is on Sunset? On uh, the, in, in e towards East LA in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, across yeah, the street yeah, from yeah. that WSS. I think that's Western. Western, yeah, that's the right one. Yeah. So there's a taco truck that always pops up there. It's called Leo's Leo's Taco Truck, and there's it's like a, also like a staple of me and Iman's relationship because we yeah. used to eat there all the time. So we're gonna go get that. We're gonna go to Palms Thai. That Thai food's so good. Oh yeah. my god! Didn't we, went, we go there when you, you yep. met Iman for the first time? We yep. went to Palms Thai. She tried to pay for. Not tried, did. She's so sneaky. Yeah, she is. So she paid. She paid for that meal. Um, what else? Uh, I would like. I'm probably gonna go just hit a bunch of other taco spots. I'm doing sets on Friday. If you want to come, don't I? One at the factory, Laugh Factory, and one at the store. Okay, I'll let you know. Eight fifteen and ten thirty. Okay, I may be hanging out with McKay for most of that day, but I'll let you know. Okay, what the what the what the deal is. Okay. Um. But yeah, I'm excited just to go back to LA. I'm not excited for the drive, though, because I've heard that the 15 has been shit for the last couple of days. I just waggled it. I'm leaving at 8 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 8 a.m., apparently... That's tomorrow. Apparently, the drive at 8 a.m. is going to be five, five and a half hours. hours. Yeah. The drive at 10 a.m. is only going to be four hours. Okay, so here's my thing, though. Yeah. Say the wind picks up again. You leave later. Yeah. You get stuck. You can't make it to LA. I'd rather leave at 8 and get there Ooh. early. Why am I making it to LA? This Thanksgiving's on Thursday. Yeah, but then if nobody can drive out that day, everyone's going to attempt to do it again the next day. No, what I mean is, if I get if the if it's a, if I don't like, I, there's no rush for me. Yeah. By the way, I, I, we haven't talked about this, but your brother's getting married. True, Trevor is getting married. How fucking great is it's that? It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. Me too, man. It's yeah, gonna be and, fun. And, and I really, I, I mean, Jesse is such a. Um, Perfect person for him. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, I couldn't be happier for him, man. Yeah. You it's know, a, it's, it's really good to see for both of them. Yeah. He, for the first time, I, I think in maybe forever, 
he looks and sounds happy. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, it's such a, as a parent, it is really such a relief. I mean, life is going to happen and, yep. and, and there's going to be ups and downs. Absolutely. And, but he seems for the first time to be happy. It's such a, a heart warming thing for your mom and I. It's so amazing to see. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Absolutely. He did tell me that I was not allowed to wear a purple suit to his wedding. No, there are colors. By the way, you and I have to go suit shopping. Why? Because I don't have any... I, all I have is a blue and red suit. That's not going to work. What, what are the colors? Maroon and forest green. Dark uh, forest green. What? Yeah. I definitely don't have any of those colors. I know. I got to buy that's, a forest green suit? No, that's why I'm saying I think you and I should go get a black suit. Hold on, hold on okay. before you freak out. Go get a black suit and then get red ties because he's wearing, or green, because or not green, because Trevor's wearing a green tie. Uh-huh. So we can't match the room. So I think we do red, red ties. What if I go get a green 70s leisure suit? You have to pass that up with him. What if I get us both green 70s a leisure suit. What's a leisure suit? Oh, dude, go ahead and Google 70s leisure suit. Guy, we're gonna we'd have some pretty big collars. I would but do you I would get us I would get you a pair of those shoes that I was wearing last night. Oh, oh yes, no. yes, no. yes. Let me see. No. Let me see. It do well, no, that's costumey though. They're all costumey. No, they're not. Don't put in green. Just put in 70s. I didn't put in green. Oh. I put in 70s leisure suit. And you know what popped up first? What? Skin. That? Yeah, dude. But that's a costume. It says I'm costume. not going to lie. That's the dude version of Daphne. From, yeah, that's, from, co- from, that's from a Scooby costume. Like, you scroll down a little bit past costumes into v- Google vintage 70s leisure suit. Guys, I am officially... Into 70s fashion. Jacob will tell you the clothes that I kind of got in the mail yesterday. I got I got these flare. What, like that? Fuck yes. Fuck yes, dude. Are you kidding? Hold you, it up. Hold you, it up. You and I are walking in like the fucking, the dudes from Nice Guys. Oh my or God. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Are you kidding? That would be amazing. You, you don't want to get some 70s leisure suits? I... It's not really my style. And also, I don't know if Trev is going to be up for that. Yeah. You have to ask the right, dude who's right. wedding it you're is. Right. It's not, it's it's not, not my your day. wedding. It's not my day. It's not my day. It's yeah. Not my day. Okay. I have a feeling he's going to say no. Oh, I could have told you that already. Yeah. Just like he didn't want me to go by LeBron for my grandfather name. Not only did he not want it, none of us wanted it. Except, except for you. me. Well, that's yeah. all that matters. Eh. Um, Debatable. What else did you have for me today? I want to talk about that article written about you. Should I read it? I think we should go over it part by part. Okay. So somebody, uh, you know, I get these, uh, I signed up for these Google alerts. Excuse me. And so sometimes, this is why, guys, you can't, when you see something on the internet, you cannot believe it's true. I, anything on TikTok, on, on anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, so somebody, this was the article, how tall is Josh Wolf? Uh, I would really like, can I read it? Five interesting facts. Well, I'm going to kind of breeze over some of it. Okay. I wouldn't breeze over it. The whole entire article is top notch. Okay. So here we go. Do you want to read it? Really bad. Okay. Because I like to, like, when you, okay. So he first showed me this article when we were in London. We were walking around. We were doing some shopping. He was like, yo, I need you to look at this article somebody wrote about me. And I could not believe what I was reading. It starts off with this which is Josh Wolf is an American comedian, True. actor, and a writer known for his hilarious stand-up performances and appearances on television shows such as Chelsea Lately, My Name is Earl, and uh, Raising Hope. These are all true. All of those are true. Yeah. While his comedic talent is undeniable, many fans often wonder about his physical stature. In this article, we will delve into the topic of how tall is Josh Wolf. By the way, can I tell you last night, those new boots that I had, they add like two or three inches. I, f- I may just wear them all the time. You were still shorter than me. I was still shorter than you, but six foot is such a happy place to live. 
Absolutely, it is. God, is that is that? Now I know why tall people look down on us short fucks because they're like they're living in a different world, dude. Whole different, whole different temperature. Six feet, and I was like, oh yeah, man, I was feeling myself at six feet. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right. well, five interesting facts about Josh Wolf. Interesting fact number one: <laughs> Josh Wolf stands at an impressive height of six feet three inches. That's Listen. right. That is so wrong. I couldn't even. The number six already off the bat is wrong. You're 5'10". 5'11". 5'10". Don't stop it. Stop it. You're 5'10". I'm like 5'10 and three quarters. You're like 5'10 and a half. If anything. I'll give you the half inch, but you're 5'10". Dan's 5'10". Not a single chance in hell Dan's 5'10". If Dan's 5'10", I'm 7'4". I am... Dan Wolf is not 5'10". Dan Wolf is barely pushing 5'9". Oh, I can't. Maybe. Yeah, I can't wait to clip this. I can't. Yeah. Uh, But I'm 5'10 and three quarters. 5'10". We're going to stick at that. Okay. This makes him significantly taller than the average American male, which measures around 5'9". He's not significantly taller than that because he's only 5'10". Well, listen, dude. Even if you're saying I'm just 5'10", I am significantly taller than 5'9". An inch is not significantly taller. It is when you're dealing between 5'9 and 5'10". That's like between 5'11 and 6 foot. It's a significant inch. Yes. But also not... It's significant like... That was my nickname in high school, significant inch. For real. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, a great name... For a rapper. <laughs> Significant Inch? Is a great name for a rapper. Yeah, dude. Top notch. His height grants him a commanding presence on stage and screen, enhancing his comedic performances. I, I, I doubt that. <laughs> this next one, number two. Towering over Chelsea Handler. Pause again. She's like the same fucking height she as you. She is not the same height as me. You stop that right now. She's a taller she is, woman. She is not the same height as me. Well, she's she's five, five, six. Tall. No, she's not. Five, six. Chelsea's not 5'6". Five, 5'6". Six. Five, six. We'll see about that. <laughs> Josh Wolf gained a widespread recognition as a frequent guest on the Poppy Late Night Talk Show. True. Standing at 6'3", True. Wolf often towered over Chelsea Handler at 5'6". This height became a reoccurring joke. This height difference became a reoccurring joke and added an extra layer of humor to their on-screen banter. We never joked about not my height. Not once was there a joke nah, about height nah, in nah. there anywhere. Like she, she joked about my dick a couple times until I was like, hey, you know, my kids... Yeah. Watch this show. Yeah. And she was like, I'll stop. I said, yeah. thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> that, yeah. There was never a joke ever made about that. No, no, no. Because I was 6'3". What's there to joke about? A competitive advantage. Interesting fact number three. Josh Wolf's tall stature has occasionally served as an advantage in his personal life. As a professional, a former professional football player. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they did their research, but whoever did the research is, should be fired. Immediately. I listen to as, as a former uh, let's be honest, I could have played professional football at Cap, six at six three with my athletic ability. What athletic ability? The six three athletic ability. I've seen dudes who are seven feet with zero athletic ability. Yeah, but that's not me. I'm six three with prime prime premier athlete ability. Disagree. As a former professional football player, being standing at six foot three gave him an edge on the field. His height allowed him to see over the offensive line and locate open receivers, enhancing his quarterback skills during his plays. I, by the way, I you really, can't even throw a football anymore. I really, well, I could when I was playing. I, re- <laughs> <laughs> I really want to talk to the person who wrote this article just to see where they got, got their information from. Yo, dude, cut back to that. Yo, my neck's getting gobbly. Holy shit. I hope on Thanksgiving nobody tries to kill me. Look at that. Oh, oh boy. Vagina neck. Vagina neck. Oh, don't you vagina <laughs> neck. <laughs> just, just push it together again real quick. Okay. Hold on. Vagina neck. <laughs> vagina neck. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that. Is that what it looks like? I actually hadn't seen that either until you pointed it out. I can't not see it now. Oh, yeah. I'm going to call you vagina neck. I might change your name in my phone to vagina neck. You better not change my name to vagina neck. <laughs> might be a great thing to do. Number four interesting fact about Josh Wolf. I wouldn't piss off, piss off the six foot three Josh Wolf. He's real mad. <laughs> yeah, he's not even real. So <laughs> I can piss him off all I want. <laughs> Because he does not exist. <laughs> he does. Ask this person. In Every, this alternate universe with Dr. Strange. It's on the Strange. internet. It's real. The perfect wingman. Interesting fact number four. Being tall also has its advantage in social settings. 
Joshua's height has lent itself well to being the perfect wingman for his friends, whether it's helping them stand out in a crowded room or providing an extra sense of security. Which, by the way... Like I was the bodyguard? Or you were their father. Like, that's... <laughs> Let me tell you something, by the way. I'm not a good wingman when you're out picking up women for this reason. Like, I am going to... Make fun of you. Yeah. You're not going to make them look good. No. The whole point is so they don't get... Like, I'm going to be yeah. like... I'm going to be like, I really appreciate you talking to most people the herpes is a is a big no but you seem to be okay with it yeah it's it, that i know for a fact that is the last thing you would do actually is try mm -hmm. and make your friends look good mm -hmm. and also how are you helping them stand out in a crowded room if you're six three because people see me i'm real tall and they come over and talk to me yeah but they're coming to talk to you not to the shorter dude but in your they come room. they come talk to me as a football star obviously that can see over the <laughs> offensive line they come talk to me, and then I introduce them with my fucking vagina neck. Look at that thing. Well, I, I just like how they kept repeating towering presence in this article. Like, like you're the fucking Statue of Liberty or something. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I'm so confused. Okay. Don't be, dude. This, don't be confused by my giant stature. Oh, I'm not confused. Because again, <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> Embracing his height. Fun fact number five. Unlike some celebrities who may feel self-conscious about their height, which, by the way, if you're tall and a celebrity, I don't think your height is what you're self-conscious about. I, I doubt it. Yeah, probably. Sorry about Joshua that. Joshua fully embraces his towering statue. He Say often that again. Say it again. Joshua fully embraces his towering statue. That's right. In his dreams. He often incorporates his height into his comedy routines. No, he doesn't. Making jokes about his long limbs and challenges of being a tall person. <laughs> You have never once experienced any of the challenges of a tall person. I, I have at almost six feet tall. I Two am, inches away from it. No, dude. Two inches away uh, from it. An inch away. Two inches away from it. An inch. Two. An inch. Two. Hmm. Inch. Two. Two. Not only that, but I, I like it, the experience of being so, but I do hear, you know what I hear a lot? The opposite. When people meet me, they're like, I thought you'd be taller. It's funny when people meet me, they're like, why are you so tall? And I'm like, guys, I, I, I've, I've explained, I've said my height as many times as I think I could. Uh, it's so funny. People are like, I thought you'd be taller. I'm like, why? They're like, you look, you look taller on TV. I do. <laughs> how can you judge that? Yeah. How, because uh, how big is your TV? You know, who's a shockingly tall person who I didn't expect them to be? Hmm. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. You told me that. I wouldn't Dude, have expected him either. He's like my height. I would have thought he was my height. I, yeah, I agree. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to insult. Chef Ramsey here, but he gives off not six foot three on TV. Then again, I can't tell how tall people are based on looking at you on TV, but he just doesn't give off. And dude, he's jacked, jacked. Yeah. He's in great shape. Like it's ridiculous. He's bigger than you. Yeah, but he's shaped like I am. Better shape than you. Stop it. Dude, his arms are bigger than yours. Well, my arms are pretty he, small right he's now. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. Like, so that was shocking. But how, how's his, how are his abs? I had, didn't ask him to lift up his shirt exactly, when I met him. Exactly, uh, exactly. Exactly what? Exactly. What point are you proving here? Exactly. Great talk. <laughs> <laughs> By doing so, he Josh Wolf establishes a relatable connection with his audience and showcases his ability to find humor in everyday situations, which is true, but not about his height. That, that, I don't... Yeah, I, I love the fact that it says that I use my long, dangly arms. I, it also makes me laugh because I'm going now and there's common questions about Josh Wolf's height. All of these questions, I'm going to tell you right now, these questions were written by the dude who answered, who, who wrote the article. Because all of them are just repeating the exact things he already answered on this. What's the questions? The first one is like, how tall is Josh Wolf? Yep. Josh Wolf stands at an impressive height of six foot three. Yes, he does. Cap. Number two, is Josh Wolf taller than Chelsea Handler? Yes. Yes. Josh Wolf is taller than Chelsea Handler. He's six three. He's five ten. Right. And Chelsea Handler is five six. Five ten. She's and three five quarters. seven. Five ten and three quarters. Which we already went over. Was Josh Wolf? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get a fucking measuring height in here next time we record. Okay. And I am going to stand right up against it. Okay. You're not six. Are you six three? Six three in shoes. I'm six two without them. Okay. But I'm usually in shoes when people meet me, so I just tell them I'm six two. Yeah. Or six three. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna measure myself. Okay. I here's what I'm guessing for real. Five ten and a half is what I'm guessing for real. That's what I would guess for real. Too. Yeah. 
Oh, wait, are we pushing my hair down? Are we? Yeah, it? hair down. Mm. Absolute hair yeah, down. Five, if you went hair five. up, you'd be six seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> and five ten and a half. All the right. yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. This this article is has Joshua ever played basketball due to his height? While there is no public record of him playing <laughs> basketball professionally, his height would certainly give him advantage <laughs> and advantage on the court. <laughs> What's the name of the person who wrote this article? <sighs> Chat can GPT. we? Can we? What's that? Chat GPT. Can we? Can we? It doesn't even say who wrote it. They're too embarrassed. Can to put I their say? Name can I say? Can I say? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me see. if There's any other funny questions in this? Uh, oh, oh, how did Josh Wolf transition from football to comedy? After an injury cut his football career short, Dude, he but... discovered his talent for comedy and began pursuing a career. Where did Josh Wolf play professional football? Oh, good question. Do you, do you want me to answer it? Can I tell you the best part? Yeah. They didn't even give you a team. Was it in the AFL? Yeah, it says Josh will play professional football in the Arena Football League. Yeah. But it doesn't cite which team you played for. Well, listen, I played for all of them. You played for none of them. I played for all of them. You played for none I of them. I was so good that they had me play quarterback for every team. You you played for them in your dreams. I for sure did not play in the AFL in my dreams. Yeah, if no, I'm dreaming, no one, no one I'm not AFL. dreaming AFL. That is not what happened. <laughs> That's like dreaming about playing AAA baseball. Yeah, dude, I'm not. I'm not dreaming of the AFL. That it'll go to the top. It might tell you the top who wrote it. I went to the I went to the bottom and it didn't say. All right. But that article kills me. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, it doesn't say who wrote it. I think ChatGPT is accurate, by the way. How, really? Yeah, because nobody in their right sane mind would write all of those when they have no facts to back it up. Uh, I mean, has Josh ever addressed his height in interviews? Yeah, he addresses his height in various interviews. I don't think you ever have. No, of course not. Not, not. even one time. No, no, no. That's because nobody would ever ask me about my height because I'm clearly six feet. Because you're clearly the average height. Oh my God. So there's a lot of, this person wrote a lot of articles that I'm going to read. Like, uh, oh yeah, it's going to be good. This is, I'm going to get high tonight and check that out. Hilarious. Yeah, right? It's so ridiculous. Um, Holy shit. What? This is what's coming to my house tonight. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's... That should be some fun. I mean, that, those are large mushrooms. When are you doing that? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. That's fun. Um, So listen, man. Um, What else is going down? <sighs> Nothing really, man. I think that's about it. I mean, yo... <sighs> So many athletes got hurt on Sunday. Did you yeah. see all that list of injuries? Yeah. Good Lord. Well, yeah. It was like the apocalypse for football players. Uh, by the way, no, for me anyways, no time of the year goes faster than football season. It, it's already week 11. Yeah. It's for, so for, crazy. In how, school, it used to be summer for me. Summer would just fly by in an instant. You know what's funny is that they call it summer vacation, but do you know who vacations aren't vacations for? Kids. Parents. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Of because, course it's a vacation for you, dude. Yeah, because you're stuck with your kids. There's nothing worse than a vacation. I, I, I always makes me laugh when people are like, um, you know, looking forward to their family vacation. Mm -hmm. you know, a family vacation is a disaster. Unless you have older kids. Older kids, fine. Young kids, it is not a vacation. It's so much better to be at the house. But to be 100%. in a hotel with young kids is a stress-filled fuck wad. Yeah, because you're all crammed into two rooms you, in a place you don't know. Oh, and there's there's no creature comforts. And then the kids are, what, where are they sleeping? And if you have young kids and uh, it's like... Sometimes you got five people in one room or you're, you know, you got two kids and the wife has one of them. Yeah. It is a do you, shit show. Do you remember that vacation we took to Maui right before I went to, into my freshman year of high school? Yeah. Do you remember the room they put us in? Yeah. Do you remember that interaction I had with that kid in the game room? No. Okay. I'm going to tell this before we get out of here. There was a game room at the hotel we were staying at. And it was like, there was a Wii down there. There was like a GameCube. You could go down and like play video games. There was a ping pong table, a bunch of stuff. It was for the kids to like go and hang yeah, out remember, and yeah. leave, the, leave the parents so they could have their time. And I wouldn't spend a lot of time in that game room because I was like, yeah, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to go play games by myself or meet some other kids my age down there. I met a kid a little younger than me down there. We started playing ping pong and we had met each other for a couple days that we were there. And probably like the second, second to last night we were there, we're playing ping pong down there. And we're, you know, we're going back and forth. And I'm just beating this kid, just absolutely beating the brakes off of him. And he's younger than me, so that's what it is. But you know me. We, we, don't, we don't have any mercy for anybody. Nope. You got to earn that win. I'm yep. not going to give you a win. 100%. Absolutely not. And so I beat the brakes off this kid. And then he picks up the ball, and he smacks it at me from across the table. And I catch it. 
And I pick it back up and I smack it even harder at him and it hits him. The kid does not pick up the ping pong ball to hit it back at me. Instead, he throws his entire That's right. paddle at me. That's right. And I dodged it. But what did it hit behind me? A full glass painting. Or a painting or a picture yep. in this ginormous glass frame. And that paddle shatters that glass so fast. And it's just me and him in there. And all of a sudden, we hear from the other room, what was that? Is everybody okay? And this worker from the hotel comes in and is like, what happened? And the kid was like, oh, and I could hear him. And the kid was like, oh, I, I, me, and my, me and my friend were playing ping pong. And the paddle slipped out of my hand and it broke this painting. And she goes, what friend? And he turns around to point at me. And I am already in the elevator. My, your, your boy dipped so fast. But by the time he turned around, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm playing with my friend. She was like, your imaginary friend? Cause I, and, she, and she goes, what friend? And as I heard that, the elevator doors closed. And I was like, well, I'm Dude. out of there. The next day, I ended up walking by him in a hallway just like in the hotel. And he was strapped to his parents. I mean, the parents on a tight leash, like yeah. we're like, you stand right next to me. And when I passed him, he like, we didn't even say a word to each other. He, I was waiting for him to say, Hey, and I was going to be like, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Like I was ready to throw that kid completely oh, under the bus. Dude, he was, Oh my God. But the fact that she was like, what friend? And I was like, later. I <laughs> love the fact, dude. Can I tell you when I was a freshman in college, we were playing football in the quad. And I forget, or baseball, and one of us hit or threw a ball and it went through a window. And now I had grown up where I grew up, and he grew up in this small town in Texas. This game mm -hmm. I was playing with. So I fucking, pew, I hightailed it. He stayed and waited for repercussions to take so he could tell them that he broke the window. Why? And later, he and I were sitting and having lunch. And he was like, I can't believe you left. I'm like, I can't believe you stayed, dude. Yeah, what the hell? I said, I guess I would have stayed if I knew you were staying, but I just thought we were fucking running. Oh, and he I, I wouldn't have stayed if I knew he was staying. Oh, I I'm, might have. I might have. I wasn't. I'm, look, based on my encounter, I'm out. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you guys would have had to pay for that painting. But he, I will tell you why I, and I would have left if I were you. Oh, I did. What, why I would have stayed if I knew he was staying is because I knew that we were freshmen. This was a dude that I wanted to have a relationship with. Right? Were you roommates? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I would have just been like... Because well, you didn't want to create that barrier inside yeah, dude, the dorm. I, yeah, been, yeah, yeah. I wanted him to know that we were going to be... And you had his back. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, I, I just assumed that. you break a window, you run. And then you regroup wherever you... Mm, yeah, you, you regroup don't run the, the door. together, you fucking pew! Yeah, you scatter you, you like have cockroaches. An, you have an escape plan and you have a place you go meet. Dude, if you run together, you're easier to catch. Yeah, you got to split up. You got to fish... Yeah, and he was not, there. It's not a pack game after that. It's it's get out every man for himself. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you. You yeah, don't get caught. We regroup. Yeah, at the, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, all right, man. Uh, listen. So we are going Thanksgiving this week. Mm -hmm. Next week, um, Casey, Casey. Uh, you haven't done KC with me, have I, I haven't done a lot of these. I have. I, I've Dude. done Phoenix, but I haven't done KC. I haven't done Mohegan Sun. Haven't I haven't done, done St. Louis. Oh, I haven't done Phoenix. I've done Tempe. But I, I mean, I assume we're going to get some of the same people who come uh, out. Maybe. It's not that far from the Tempe Improv. Yeah, maybe. It's a different group. Well, right. But if people have come and seen us on New Year's, they might want to come see us again. Maybe. Maybe. We have a show on Sunday because Sunday's New Year's Eve. Yeah. But this Kansas City week is always fucking bananas. Um, I've had, you know, the bachelor party story. Yep. I've had a couple of really big women come who also do that as a job. Nice. They come, they have come in the last couple of years. There's like a table of three or four of them. And they always pick me up after the show. Where's that ginormous six foot seven woman who always picks you up and holds you like a baby? It was in Boston. Boston, yeah. Um, there is a dude. Uh, it, it'll just be good. Yeah. Uh, it's going to well, be really we, good. We love those Phoenix, Arizona shows. They're awesome. Well, this, I'm talking about Kansas City. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah, Kansas City is, is fucking. And Mohegan Sun, because so many of my friends come. And fucking St. Louis, dude, shows up. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be a great month, man. I'm really looking forward to it. And once again, guys, so incredibly grateful for all of you. Uh, you know, the more I do this and the longer I'm around, the more I just appreciate every time I get to hop on stage and every trip you and I get to take mm. and, and um, you know, meeting all of you and doing the meet and greets and... It's just a, so amazing. And, and I, I, when I say thank you, I really just mean 
just that. Thank you so much for allowing me to live the exact life I dreamed of living. Yeah. Kind of crazy to be able to say that. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got anything to say? Um, Look, we'll always appreciate the support. Thank you guys for not only supporting him, but supporting me and what I do in this new endeavor. Uh, it's only been a year, but boy, what I can't even imagine what there is to come. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the new people showing up. And Dude, you. you're doing so good on stage. I appreciate it. Mike Binder saw you in, in Naples and was like, I can't believe how comfortable he is. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's it's really impressive. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those who show up at our shows, those who we will see in future dates, those overseas, those in countries we don't get to go to. Your support does not go unnoticed. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, comedianjoshwolf.com, tour dates and tickets, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. It's the holidays, everybody. Go do something nice for somebody today. Tell them you love them. We'll see you next week. If you like the show, tell them, motherfucker. All right, everybody. Later. Talk to you.